I started um, my career here at the animal shelter at the very most entry-level position that that I could have. I was in the kennels. I was I was hired just to keep them clean for a very short amount of time, and then I loved it. I knew that this was my calling. I worked my way up through through different positions here at the shelter. I started out as extra help in the kennels, and I was very, very excited to be able to um, get a position as an animal control officer one in the kennels, and that means I had a patch on my shirt, and I was very excited to be part of this. Uh, I moved up and I promoted to animal control officer two in the kennels as well. So I was doing a lot of training, more leadership, I took on bigger chunks of responsibility wherever I could. The way I look at it, every position that I've had, I've been able to change a little bit. In 2009, there was an opportunity, and again, I interviewed um, for the deputy director position, and that's where I'm at right now. So I've been in the deputy director for animal services since 2009. So I've had a long career here, and I can't imagine my life without the shelter at all. When I started, it was really hard here. It was definitely a pound atmosphere. Animals would be relinquished over the front counter and there were no laws to, to protect them or help them. And they could be relinquished and walked right down to our blue room and that's where we euthanized. They didn't have laws protecting them that they could go up for adoption and stay up for adoption for a number of days no matter how they came in. We used to euthanize five days a week, um, hundreds, a hundred animals each day. It was really hard. It was really hard. Um, I did that for many years. I did it for many years. We euthanized for space. We euthanized for behavior. When I first started here, pit bulls weren't available for adoption. If a pit bull came in here, or any looked pity at all, or bully type, it was a death sentence. They, they went, they'd stay here for their state mandated stray hold and then we would put them to sleep. I spent a lot of time during my kennel time over in the quarantine building because that's where they were held, uh, sharing my lunch, sharing treats, and I would go down, I'd make friends with all of them. I'd give them blankets just so they could tear them up, just so they had something fun to do. And before I had to walk them down to the euthanasia room. But I wanted them to be, to be comfortable, to be happy that when, when they came down to that room, there was somebody hugging on them and loving them and, and speaking nice to them. Um, that was really important. It was a, it's a big difference from how we handled uh, animals in the in the 90s, even in the 2000s, the way, versus the way it's happening now. Back then, shelter philosophy was different. Uh, we couldn't have overcrowding at our shelter. We had to keep kennels open for newly arrived ones. In order to combat overpopulation, we euthanized for space. If we ran out of space, then we would have to go and choose animals to be euthanized. Throughout the years, there's been uh, many times that we've euthanized healthy, happy animals just because we ran out of space. Um, we had a lot of rescue groups that came and pulled from us and you know, they got together with the goal of getting this department to be no kill. It was never our intention to cause problem. It was always our intention to bring to the forefront that the general public no longer wants to kill these animals. And you know, the old pound mindset of 30 years ago has long gone. The concept of no-kill is not to euthanize any healthy adoptable animal. All healthy adoptable animals um, get homes. And 
we have added that a 90% save rate is where we call ourselves no-kill. So in 2012 is when uh, the public and the rescues joined together to come to the commission and promote uh, this, the no-kill philosophy, the no-kill philosophy for our county. And we had hundreds of people here. We had speakers on the outside of our, of our classroom where they were presenting to accommodate all the people that came. Um, it was very emotional, very, very charged, very um, passionate. There's a lot of passionate people here. And they really wanted to, to set Ventura County apart to, to become a no-kill facility. There was a few of us that got up and spoke. Um, I think at that time, the biggest change that happened after the meeting was that that Ventura County Animal Services were no longer autonomous and responded directly to the Board of Supervisors. They came in under public health. So now they have somebody to answer to. And a lot of changes happened really, really quick in six months. What motivated the Board of Supervisors to take this action was the fact that we had uh, quite a few citizens come forward and express their frustration with how many animals uh, were being killed at the animal shelter. Rescue groups and citizens that weren't associated with that rescue groups. There's a lot of people that really cared about that. And, um, hearing from those citizens, the Board of Supervisors finally uh, uh, decided that we were going to put something, actually put a motion forward that um, directed our staff to work towards becoming no kill. Supervisor Bennett presented that we need to make it a goal to get to no kill, to get to that 90% save rate. And it was voted on unanimously by the Ventura County Board of Supervisors. The person in charge of the shelter left. Um, the vet retired. Uh, the deputy director, basically who was practically running it anyway, um, I kept telling her that she, I know you can do this. I know I know we can go no kill. I've looked at the numbers. I've taken your inventory and I've reconfigured. If you put your small dogs together and you leave your big dogs on this section, I know you can do it. I, I mean, I've proved to myself that you can do it. And I kept telling Donna, I know you can do this. I know you can do this. I've always had a lot of respect for Donna. Right? I mean, she's business, she's bare bones, but you know, um, I, I just never had an issue with her. When we were given the goal to become no-kill by the County Board of Supervisors, I didn't know if we could reach it. I wanted to with all my heart. I also took a year-long um, course of no-kill shelter management with uh, Bonnie Brown from the Nevada Humane Society. Very eye-opening, very eye-opening about all the different integral parts that you need in order to achieve this. The transition worked really well. Donna Gillespie kind of played an invaluable role in implementing and doing, you know, the, the beginning of change is always the most difficult. And she was there for the beginning of that change um, and held that all together as the acting director uh, very well. We were very pleasantly surprised to find that they were able to get all the way there and actually cross the threshold and meet the definition of a no-kill shelter. And they've been able to keep it that way ever since. So real kudos to staff for taking that direction and actually pushing it all the way um, beyond the definition of no-kill. It has been a crazy ride. It has been, it's been chaotic. It's been fulfilling it's to see all the changes that we that we started, that we've now broadened, and the new ones, the new ones coming on our pet retention program, our foster program. We've increased our our, our rescues. All these programs together that have made us successful and have made us the largest no-kill open commission municipal shelter in California. And I'm so pleased to be a part of it. For more information on Ventura County Animal Services and to view additional episodes of Shelter Life, visit www.vcas.us slash shelterlife.